Let's take a moment and walk through the System Settings menu on the AVIC 8000 next. We'll get to System Settings by touching the gear, and we'll start off with the, uh, the toolbox up here. We can get to Navigation Related Settings by touching this one, and here we can choose the Navigation Info window and, and have that switched on, and our AV and App Guide mode can be switched on too. This means navigation, will be shown, navigation information will be shown on the bottom of the screen, or if we are in an AV source or using uh, an app from a compatible phone, we can get navigation information while on those screens as well with both of these switched on. We'll go back up. Next up is our uh, AV source settings. And here we can make adjustments to uh, mix tracks flash patterns. Next up are our radio settings and we can make adjustments to our HD radio settings right here. Next up is Sirius XM settings, and we can make adjustments to our Sirius XM settings here. Next is our tag forwarding, so if we've tagged a song either from HD radio or Sirius XM, that tag will be stored to USB number one, or it will be stored to USB number two. Wherever you tend to connect your iPod is where uh, you'll want to have your tag forwarding uh, set to. Next up is Bluetooth audio, and we can have Bluetooth audio show up in our source list with this on, or we can have Bluetooth audio taken out of the source list. I like to use Bluetooth audio, so we'll leave that in the source list. All right, I'm going to hit my Go Back button. Next up is EverScroll, and right now EverScroll is turned off. If I switch EverScroll on, when text appears on the screen, it will continuously scroll across the screen. If you don't like that continuous motion on the screen, you can switch EverScroll off. It'll scroll across the screen one time and then stop. Next up are input and output settings. Let's start with our smartphone setup screen. We'll open that window. And if you're going to connect an iPhone to the system, uh, you're going to choose iPhone or iPod. If you're going to connect some other type of phone, you'll choose some other device. This would be an Android phone or some other type of phone. So in this particular setup, I'm going to uh, choose an iPod or an iPhone. Then you choose your connection type. Right now I have USB connected, uh, chosen as my connection. This could also be a digital AV adapter if you are using an iPhone 5 with Pioneer's app radio mode. And if you are using a, uh, an Android device that is not connected at all or an iPhone that's not connected at all, you can go wirelessly through uh, via Bluetooth. So for right now, I'm choosing a USB connection. Uh, based on these two uh, settings here, the phone or, or the connection type, different options will become available to you here. We can go back up. Next up is our uh, AV input. Right now it is set to camera. We could also choose to have our AV input set as a source or the AV input can be turned off. I'll choose camera for right now. And then we have our auxiliary input. Uh, we can have auxiliary input show up in our source list and if you don't use auxiliary input you could switch it off. I like to use auxiliary input so we'll leave that on. And we have, uh, if you're using Pioneer's app radio mode, you can adjust the video settings here. Next up is our camera settings. And the AVIC 8000 Next can operate with two different cameras, a backup camera and a second camera that can be used in any number of different locations. So right now, camera view is turned off. We can have camera view turned on, and that would switch the camera on, the secondary camera on. We'll switch that off for right now. Our backup camera input right now is switched off. We can have that switched on, and when that's switched on, we have to choose a, a type of polarity, either battery or ground. And we'll turn our backup camera off again. Next up is our parking assist lines. Right now, the parking assist lines are turned off. Uh, if you have a camera that has its own parking assist lines, you would want to leave these turned off. If you have a backup camera that does not have parking assist lines, you may want to turn them on. And when you switch them on, you'll want to adjust the parking assist lines. And you can make those adjustments just by grabbing the nodes and putting them wherever they make sense uh, for you when you're backing up so you understand where the back of your vehicle is and you can safely use reverse. Once you're done with that, we can go back. We'll go up one more level here. We'll scroll down. Next up is our demonstration mode. If you don't want to see the demonstration mode, uh, for the radio when the system is turned off, we can switch the demo mode off right here. Next we have system languages. And with system languages, we have a number of different languages to choose from. Make sure you choose a language that you can read because if you can't, it may be difficult to get back to an, a language that you can use. We can restore the settings for the system right here. 
And we can restore all the settings or a number of different combinations of settings right here. We'll go back up. And our keyboard is right now set to English. We have a number of different choices there. We can have the beep tone turned on or off, and that is the beep sound you hear when I touch the screen. Next up is our picture adjustment, and we'll open that. And we have a number of different picture adjustments to work with here. Right now is the main screen picture adjustment, and we can change the brightness, contrast, and so forth. Then we can choose to, uh, choose to change the rear view camera and, and adjust the rear view camera, and we can choose to adjust the second camera if we have a second camera installed in the system, and we can go back to our source screen. Go back. Next up is our system information. And the system information, we have information about the firmware, how to update the firmware. 3D calibration status and connection status are very important for the installation of the system. Since this is a navigation system, uh, 3D calibration can very carefully track the motion of your vehicle. When you first install the system, the system will learn the motion of your vehicle and it will initialize the sensor. It will measure the distance that you drive and if you have the optional speed pulse wire connected to the system, it will measure speed pulses while you're driving. Learning distance and speed pulse can all be reset should you need to reset them or if you would move this radio to a different vehicle. We'll go back up and next is our connection status where we have uh, some very important information. Do you have the GPS antenna connected? Are you receiving GPS signals? Uh, the installation type, do you have speed pulse connected? Do you have the illumination wire connected? This is your backup signal. And are you using the iDatalink Maestro box to integrate into the factory system? All of that information is contained here. We'll go back up. Lastly is our OEM setting. So if you're using the iDatalink Maestro box, you'll enter into this setting area to make some adjustments there.